Good morning, everyone. Uh, great to be in San Diego again. This is my second visit to San Diego in a month. Last time I was here for a wedding on the beach in uh, Coronado Island. Now, this is lovely, and my compliments as always to Mary for her setup, but the wedding on the beach it's on Coronado was uh, even better. Um, so I thought uh, today I'd give a, a, a quick update in another area of interest given um, the obvious interest as we're talking about systems getting to exascale and so on ar around power and cooling. And at the, at the last meeting back in, um, in Houston back in April, um, for those who were there, you may recall that I had uh, talked about the uh, system that we had uh, delivered to Tokyo Tech, the Tsubami 2.0 system, uh, that at that time was number four on the top 500 list. It has migrated one notch down to, uh, to number five on the, on the June list, um, but still is, is uh, being touted as the uh, uh, large, the greenest production supercomputer in the world as per the Green 500. Um, and you know that was very, very specifically designed uh, with. There we go with, uh, you know, with our uh, purpose-built systems, the SL390S systems that we designed specifically for HPC, with integrated GPUs and so on, designed very much for power efficiency and performance and so on. And we talk about. Um, you know, these sort of three um, areas of uh, performance, efficiency, and agility in general when we're talking about our HPC solutions. But I thought um, today I'd talk a little bit about what we're doing with our performance optimized data center, given that we did a, uh, a major launch on that back in, uh, um, back in June. Uh, so something new. So we've talked, I've talked uh, to this audience before about POD. Um, at a high level in terms of uh, some of the applications of it. We're seeing a very, very uh, strong uh, uptick in activity across a variety of application usages um, in aerospace and edu, telecom. Uh, lots of folks in the web services arena. Um, our single uh, largest customer bought 22 pods in a single order for a web services uh, environment. Um, and we're seeing a lot of interest in HPC uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, we, we have customers who want to be able to um, expand out their HPC footprint and in order to do that simply need more data center capacity. Uh, they need to perhaps build a new data center. Um, and that's you know, a multi-year uh, effort uh, costing many millions and so on. Um, whereas you can put in a pod in a few months and be able to uh, implement the expansion of capacity in a modular fashion by just putting pods in place. Uh, we're seeing folks who would, you know, just need temporary capacity. They actually, we have customers co who've come to us, said, you know, for one reason or another, uh, they need X amount of capacity for six months. It might be to, to run a particular program or project. Um, and again, they can do that uh, with this, again, without having to build it out. So lots of uh, reasons why uh, folks have been doing this. What we introduced in June was this thing with, uh, I, I always comment on our gift for product naming. Um, internally, we always called it the Ecopod. And our product naming specialists decided that they really should call it the HP Pod 240A. Um, just rolls off the tongue. Um, this is the Ecopod. Um, and the key to it is this is taking the pod technology that we've been de developing for the last couple of years and building it out in a new air-cooled uh, model that allows us to continue this ability to be able to deliver um, modular data centers, deliver them quickly, deliver them with at extremely low cost, both from an OPEX and CAPEX standpoint, um, and drive the power efficiency even further down than we ever have. Um, and again, do it in a very, very, very dense package um, using some technology we call adaptive cooling. I'll talk about more in a minute. Fully integrated management and so on. So this literally is you know, a prefabricated data center in a box that we manufacture 
at our so-called HP Pod Works in Houston. Um, some folks, in fact, in the room who took the uh, factory tour uh, with me uh, while we were in Houston at the last meeting actually saw the Pod Works and saw one of these uh, uh, in operation sitting there. Um, so again, this becomes, uh, you know, the HPC data center in a box. So this is my, uh, my test to see if I can use Earl's laptop. Just like Henry Ford's assembly line gave us affordable automobiles, in 2010, HP's Podworks assembly line for data center meant that you didn't have to be Google or Microsoft to transform your enterprise or even your computer room. Both assembly lines made improvements like quality and speed, but customers just wanted more, like high performance. And high technology, like today's nearly perfect energy use vehicles. Welcome to the HP Pod 240A, the world's most efficient data center. It packs 10 times the IT capacity in a quick, modular, compact package. The HP Pod 240A consists of two 40-foot IT modules, each housing up to 2250U industry standard racks, that includes 24 individual DX cooling units for maximum efficiency, and an easily accessible common eight foot wide hot aisle that can power and cool up to two megawatts of IT equipment. With average capacity of more than 44 kilowatts in every rack, that's seven times more capacity than a traditional data center. In the pod or remotely, the ECS delivers end-to-end -end management automation and control of the facility and the IT, dramatically reducing time to build your data center and bring servers online, aligning capital projects more closely to your business need and faster time to revenue. A traditional tier three data center facility can cost as much as $33 million versus $8 million for an HP Pod 240A, all in one-tenth the space. With HP's adaptive cooling technology, we can deliver near perfect energy usage. A 1.2 megawatt IT load in a traditional data center consumes or wastes about $1.5 million a year. Now with the new pod, that same IT load can be housed, powered, and cooled for as low as $55,000 a year. That's greater than $1.4 million in annual savings. The HP Pod 240A, the world's most efficient data center. Lightning fast, quarter the cost, near perfect energy usage. No compromises, no matter how many you need or how you want to use them. Okay, so that was Wade Vinson, who uh, is actually the architect of the uh, pod. Uh, and internally is referred to as the pod father. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, so just again to, to you know go just quickly on some of the things that, that Wade mentioned in the video. So you see the, the breakdown on the side here uh, in what it looks like. So again, let's see, there we go. So you see the two modules side by side with a hot aisle in between, cold aisles on the sides. Um, so basically, these are literally two modules that get manufactured at the pod works, broken down and get shipped again with the cooling hat sitting up on top of it, so with all the DX units there. Again, 22 racks on each side, 50 U high, uh, so that's 2200 uh, U of effective rack space. So you can sort of do the math in terms of how many uh, uh, systems that translates into so on. And again, that 44 kilowatts per rack or 69 kilowatts peak, which means you can put a lot in there. I did some back of the napkin calculations and it occurred to me that the Tsubami 2 system at Tokyo Tech, which is about 2.4 petaflops peak, uh, would just about fit inside of one of these. So quite a bit of capacity uh, in there. The adaptive cooling is really a, a key part of the technology. So again, you have the uh, DX unit sitting up on top, and basically 
this, the management system is watching the inlet temperature going into the systems inside the, uh, the chassis. And based on rules that the system manager can set up or use our default rules, um, it'll use free air when the inlet temp temperature is in a given range. Okay, this is showing between 58 degrees and 87 degrees. Uh, when it goes outside that range, if it starts going, inlet temperature starts drifting close to or above 87 degrees, um, it'll start kicking in the DX units running in what's called DX assist mode, which is sort of like running the air conditioner with the windows open. So you get a combination of the DX unit as well as air coming in from uh, ambient air from the outside. Um, and if it gets above a higher level, if it starts getting too warm, it'll actually kick over totally to the DX units. And you can see what that does to the PUE. When you're using straight free air, you're down at that 1.05 level. Um, running at totally on the DX units, you're at about 1.3, which is roughly what we do with the water-cooled pods that we've been delivering up until now. Um, and then all of that is presented again back to the system managers and so on through uh, that little screen that Wade pointed to inside of the pod but since you know most folks don't have their offices in there um, you can bring it out to a web interface any place in your working environment so you can see all of the rules that you set up for the adaptive, uh, uh, adaptive uh, cooling you have a full sort of dashboard for what's going on inside the pod you sort of see racks here and the cooling units and so on where again you can just glance at it to see what the current status of the environment is and of course all of that ties into our overall management infrastructure called uh, HP Insight Control that's pro providing management of the individual systems, individual disk drives and so on and so forth. Um, and of course, oops, a little bit chewed up in uh, moving over to the other laptop, but the, you know, and all of this is implemented through full end-to-end -end services and so on. We start with, you know, complete design of uh, what's needed for your environment in terms of the data center uh, requirements. Um, we build it all in the uh, pod work, so again, it gets delivered you know, as a modular data center. In a couple of pieces, it gets bolted together on your site and you're up and running. Um, the on-site deployment and obviously ongoing service and support. Um, and in terms of, again, uptake in this on the HPC community, I've mentioned to this audience a couple of times being a little bit vague about a particular customer of ours because for a variety of reasons, they've not wanted to identify themselves um, as being a customer for this technology and want people to know what they actually had inside their pod and so on. Uh, that changed this past year because uh, they placed the system uh, pretty high up in the top 500 list. And so that customer is Airbus. Um, and so uh, they came online just in the spring, um, after the last meeting actually, um, with a new pod located at their site in Toulouse in France um, that's about 2,000 blade servers, uh, the BL260C and a HP cluster platform, um, and in fact placed at number 29 on the list, which makes it in fact the largest industrial supercomputer on the top 500 list. So again, implemented in a box. It actually, the, the, in that case, since it was Europe, the whole system was implemented at our factory in Erskine in Scotland, um, delivered on site in Toulouse with all the IT in the pod, literally placed on a slab, hooked up to power, and, and uh, this is water bait, water cooled uh, pod, uh, hooked up to the network and so on and so forth, and they were up and running dramatic, you know, very, very quickly. So the whole family of modular data centers uh, is shown here. It basically starting with uh, custom pods, so we can actually implement a specific design to the particular requirements of uh, any of our customers. Uh, the water-cooled pods, the 20-foot and 40-foot versions, you understand the key of the naming on the 20C and the 40C. 
uh, the new Ecopod, and we even have this capability, um, uh, this thing that we call a flexible data center. So think of the uh, modular house business applied to data centers. So this is where we literally build, can build whole true data centers with office space and data center capacity and so on in sort of these prefab units that we can deliver, then deliver on site. And so you can build out a total freestanding uh, data center that way. So to close, you know, this all builds into our, our overall approach to HPC in terms of starting with our purpose-built servers like the SL390S and our blades and so on, um, building them into uh, highly efficient uh, enclosures, again, with, you know, high uh, efficiency power supplies, very much designed for uh, power efficiency and uh, appropriate airflows and so on. Uh, put them into modular flexible rack solutions. We sometimes forget how important some of the basics in racking are. Uh, my favorite part of taking the factory tour in Houston is uh, going through the power lab. And the guy who runs the lab there is great. He can spend an a uh, half an hour talking about what I always thought were power strips. Uh, but are in fact, he's very careful to point out, no, 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 these are intelligent power distribution units because he points out that those power strips have ethernet plugs that plug into them, that ties them into our whole management infrastructure and so on. And then again, out to our complete modular data centers, the HP pod. So with that, I'm out of time. Thank you, and uh, hope you have a great meeting.